Welcome back to Ada Zoysia. I'm Paul and this week we're going to talk about zoysia grass and my 2020 fertility plan for how I'm going to apply fertilizers and other amendments to the yard to get my grass to grow and spread and drive roots deep. First we're going to talk about um, I grow Meyer zoysia and have just plugged in some El Toro zoysia. Uh, Meyer is basically like the original um, improved variety from like 1950s and El Toro was improved in the 1980s I think. Anyway, uh, they're both medium bladed zoysia grasses. The Meyer and the El Toro look pretty similar. Um, I think the El Toro is maybe a shade lighter, um, but I don't think you're going to be able to see a lot of difference when they're mixed in. Um, the one big difference between the two is going to be the fact that El Toro zoysia is the fastest spreading zoysia. It also is the most shade tolerant zoysia. So I can plug this into shady areas, which I have a lot of shade. And I'm hoping to see an improved response from the El Toro versus the Meyer, where the grass would live, but it wouldn't thrive. It would be really thin. And, and of course, you know, I have red clay, so the sun bakes my soil and it's basically just makes it really hard and nothing wants to grow there. Um, along with talking about the types, I'm not going to get into the history or anything, but really some good general purpose information for people who grow zoysia in their yard. Um, number one would be to mow often, you know, maybe an inch or two. You could go above two inches, but by doing so, you're increasing your chances for a thatch. And that thatch forms a barrier, uh, a matted type barrier of roots and woody, stemmy debris between the soil and the uh, surface of the soil and uh, what it does is it does not allow air water and nutrients to penetrate and it can really deprive the plant a lot so um, we'll get into some more things about thatch uh, newly planted lawns need uh, probably at least two waterings a day uh, always want to water deep not shallow um, and what that does is when you moisten the soil six eight inches deep then you let it dry a little bit before you apply a little bit more. You're training your roots to grow deep for finding water and new nutrients that they typically wouldn't get if you had shallow roots. So anytime you water frequently on a regular basis outside of establishing new plugs, new sod or new seed, um, you're training your roots to go very shallow so that means if you skip a day or two and don't water, your roots that are only an inch or two deep are going to dry up and your plant will uh, be in distress. Also, when you fertilize, uh, your soil should be moist. Never wet, never dry. Uh, the grass blades should always be dry. And once you apply your fertilizer, whether it's a liquid or a granule, you want to uh, we'll water it in and you don't have to it'll be typically fine if you don't water it in um, but you'll see better results if you water it in you're washing it off the grass blades you know nitrogen can burn a plant since it's in a concentrated form and if it makes leaf blade contact and stays on that leaf it could burn it but you good general practice is to water your applications in if you're going to have a rain within the next 24 or 48 hours, you're probably okay. Another thing with zoysia would be um, disease, insects, and different weeds. Um, your common zoysia diseases would be like large patch or brown patch, um, rust, or leaf spot. And there are uh, things that happen in nature and different conditions that um, allow different fungus and disease to come in. A lot of it has to do with uh, lack of sunlight, excess moisture, um, cool temperatures, things of that nature. The 
insect issue is very tolerable in zoysia grass. Typically, you'll see white grubs in your soil. Um, if you do want to treat grubs, I suggest that you identify what you're going to treat first. Don't assume that you have it because anytime you use an insecticide, you are really killing off a good portion of your beneficial insect population. So the only time you really want to treat for grubs is, let's say, June, July, August maybe, when the grubs are near the soil surface feeding on roots. Um, you never want to do it in spring because more than likely you will mistake beneficial grubs with the uh, non-beneficial grubs, the ones that actually eat your roots. The beneficial grubs eat organic material and that's a good thing. Um, there are other uh, insect that do prey on zoysia grass. That would be like chinch bugs, spittle bugs, scale, sod web worms, army worms, uh, mole crickets, and I don't know if I said bill bugs. But um, typically here in eastern North Carolina where I am at, I have white grubs and I don't think I've really identified any other common pests. But typically um, there are some insecticides that target grubs like imatocloprid, which I think I've heard that they were taken off the market. It's a nicotinoid um, made from nicotine. Anyway, there was some issue with it that they're pulling it off the market, um, if I'm correct in that statement. So normally bifen or bifenthrin um, would typically treat most of your insect problems but then again you are killing beneficial insects um, there's a ton of them and when you do kill them off you really disturb the good to bad ratio of beneficial to non-beneficial insects the um, weeds that we typically have a problem with uh, summer weeds like crabgrass, goosegrass um, this is what I see. And winter weeds being poa annua uh, and typically your winter broadleaf weeds. Um, I see some spurge and some things like that. And they're pretty simple to treat and get out. I do a lot of hand picking so I don't have to spray a lot. Um, I just applied, a, my neighbor applied uh, a round of monument about a month ago, I guess, and it didn't do anything. And we went to 0.53 ounces per acre rate, which is the high rate. And he said, well, it's an old bottle of Monument, which is Trifloxysefuron, and it should have knocked out the POA. It did not have an effect at all. So I just went around the yard, and when I see a piece, I pull it up, throw it away. But um, the other thing that is really important would be a pre-emergent. And the pre-emergent will prevent a lot of your weeds from growing. You can do a granule or a liquid application. And in the spring, I recommend prodiamine for um, zoysia grass. And that would be around the mid-February to early March time frame. And in the fall, I recommend Dithiapyr, which you would put out mid-August to mid-September typically. And that would prevent your winter weeds like poa annual, your broadleaf weeds, those type of things. So we talk about zoysia grass and it is a warm season perennial grass, which means it comes back. Um, it does not have to be reseeded for it to come back. It goes dormant in the uh, late fall, early winter time, and it'll turn a golden brown color. It's a beautiful, thick, golden brown um, lawn. And the way it grows is it has underground runners or shoots called rhizomes. And then it grows a lot like Bermuda grass on top where it has runners. And those above ground runners are called stolons. Apparently the third time's the charm because I ran out of storage space on my phone and it took me about 15 minutes to figure out that I had to empty my trash in my gallery which was like 40 gigabytes. Anyway, 
So here we have X Start, the starter fertilizer from Carbon Earth Company. Uh, let's see. It is different from typical lawn fertilizer in that it has a high phosphorus content. Phosphorus is typically found abundantly in soil and is typically not needed in fertilizers. In my case, my soil test said that I was deficient. So I will be adding a bag of this to my yearly, uh, well, one application of this uh, for my lawn this year. What the um, X-Start has is uh, composted poultry litter, 7% biochar. It's an 824.4 on the NPK. It has 8% sulfur. It has the peptides, and it also has 2% zinc for uh, helping seedlings uh, a little better. So my main purpose for this is to stay with the Carbon Earth line and also have a higher phosphorus uh, amendment to my soil for this year so this should put me right in line I've already made one small adjustment about the same size um, in late winter and this will be uh, for June I will be sharing my um, calendar plan with you All right, so here we have the carbon earth X green 818 this is a spoon feeding type fertilizer low and equal nitrogen and um, potassium. It also has 1% phosphorus. So everything looks great. Um, this is gonna be my main staple for fertilization this year. So what X Green has is, has the peptides, the composted poultry uh, litter with the, um, let me look, 14% biochar. So this stuff, is going to look black. This is a greens grade prio, which means it's really fine. It's hard to see coming out of a hopper. So you really have to trust your spreader setting and um, just have it come out and know it's coming out. So 818 is 10% sulfur and 4% iron. Remember, iron is one of those micronutrients. Actually, I think it's a macro. I don't know. Either way, it is one of the responsible parties for a darker green turf. This is going to be my spoon feeding number one fertilizer amendment for the entire year. Here are the next products. All right, so when we talk about other amendments to our soil, other than just NPK, which is your standard fertilizer, your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, your biochar, your peptides that we're putting in, um, your composted chicken manure, and your iron, sulfur, those type things. There are other beneficial things that you can add to your yard, one being humic acid. Humic acid is a chelator. Um, I've done a video on it before explaining it. Humic 12 is a 12% humic solution. Um, And it's got like some potassium hydroxide. What is it? Yeah, potassium hydroxide in it. RGS is humic acid, sea kelp. 6% um, humic, 3% sea kelp. These guys are going to help. Well, this particular one is going to help drive roots. Um, and that's what I use it for. So each has their place. I will be applying some sort of humic acid probably on a weekly basis. RGS will I'll be applying um, every other week until I run out and there are a couple more items that I have that I want to go over Just chilling here with my boys microgreen and green effect Microgreen is going to be one of those other ones with the RGS and humic that will um, Be applied um, Let's say I might apply this three times a year. I probably don't need to but I have it so I'm going to use it the X soil is loaded with micronutrients from the co-composted chicken manure. Um, the microgreen is an 002, so it's 2% potassium. And if nobody's ever explained what NPK does, think of it like up, down, and all around. Nitrogen is for top growth. Uh, phosphorus is for what's below the soil, so your root growth. And the potassium is an all-around type fertilizer um, in what it does. 
So when we get ready to talk about my fertility plan for this year, I will be implementing green effect, uh, probably green effect and microgreen in the summertime. And green effect is 7% nitrogen. Both of these guys contain iron. Um, so when these two are combined, it's gonna get a heavy shot of iron. And of course the micronutrients in the microgreen. The green effect also has sulfur, so we already know what that does. So my main job probably for these two are going to be in July and August, our hottest part of the year. I'm only going to put down um, fertilizer once over six or seven weeks. And in the meantime, I'm going to use a little bit of each of these to keep my color without pushing a lot of nitrogen during periods of stress. And that's something you don't want during dry periods and heat stress. Uh, you don't really want to push a lot of fertilizer. It's not good for the plant. So I'll be using these two in small amounts during that time. Now here is my fertility plan. I hope you'll be able to see it. All right, so this is my 2020 fertility plan. On 321, we did 30 pounds per thousand of X soil. And what that did was about one pound of actual nitrogen. Uh, per thousand so that is a slow release nitrogen and that should release over 10 to 12 weeks or so so slow release is good um, last weekend on the 5th I applied the Carbon X Pro 2404 six tenths of a pound of nitrogen so from then on I'm gonna wait one month after that because that is a slow release 2404 and I could wait six weeks but you know I'm a little giddy I'm gonna go ahead on 5-2 um, on May the 2nd I'm gonna start my X screen applications so I'm gonna basically one bag of X screen on my yard uh, is two tenths of a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet now I'm gonna go every two weeks with X green until June the 13th. June the 13th will be my X start. Has the same amount of nitrogen. It's just going to add me a little bit more um, phosphorus to correct a deficiency. And then we're just going to we're going to end the year out every two weeks with X green in September the 5th. And that gives us a total of 3.4 pounds of actual nitrogen on the yard for the year. Well, 3.4 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet for the year. Um, so that's going to set us up for a really good growing season. Now, something I forgot to mention is if you look at my dates, July Let's see, on 627, we're going to put down our application. Then we're going to wait three weeks and we'll put down uh, another application, then wait three weeks. So, in them two three week periods, um, I'm thinking about doing the green effect and the microgreen to help with uh, color and just keeping it green through the stress period. Now, it is important to know that zoysia grass needs to be maintained in the hot summer temperatures, maybe at a little bit higher um, height of cut. Uh, anytime your lawn is stressed in, in drought periods, you need to water deeply and infrequently. Uh, so, that's what we're going to do this year. If you have any questions, let me know. And... If I don't know the answers, I'll find it for you. So there's a lot of people that are out there who can help us both. So don't feel alone and be vocal. Please leave me a comment and subscribe and you'll be notified of my next video. And to wrap things up, I would like to give a shout out to some YouTubers out there who have sent me some stickers. Um, we have Chuck from dadding all day and 
I'm going to be linking his channel in the description. I also have a few more here to go through. Derek over at Lazy Lawns has sent me some stickers. Um, looks like we have Nathan from Pacific Northwest Lawns. He said, Paul, keep up the good videos, bud. Hope your 2020 season is the best ever. Thank you, Nathan. And I have a couple more. And these guys are from a, a Facebook page called The Grass Goons. And it's a great group of guys. Almost all of your YouTubers are in there. People ask questions. They, uh, they ask questions about what's wrong with my lawn, what kind of weed is this. Um, a lot of people like to brag. Some people have some pretty good looking uh, uh, lawns and they like to showcase them. So it looks like Francis Fausto sent me a Grass Goon sticker here. He also has a YouTube channel and I will link that in the description. And we have one more. Zach Williams also has a channel. Um, let's see. I feel like there's something else in here. Yeah, there's one hiding. So he also sent me a couple of Grass Goon stickers and two of his channel stickers, which is Lawn Flag Landscaping. Now I will take these guys' channels and link them to my description. And you can visit and subscribe to these guys anytime you want. They are wonderful with their knowledge and are able to answer whatever questions you have and their content's really good too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure the notifications are turned on so that you can know the next time I upload a video. Have a great day.